Hey guys, a new day, a new video from Metaclosis Perfectionel. So in the previous video, we have talked about an introduction to the myeloproliferative disorders. And today, let's start with the polycythemia vera. Let's break this down. What does poly mean? Poly means numerous, lots of. Cythemia. Emia means blood and cyte is the cell. So many cells in the blood. And vera means true. It's a Latin word. So true increased in blood cells. So if you say true, is there such thing as false? Yep, we will discover this. So let's get started. Here's the famous slide. Myeloproliferative disorders are here. Polycythemia vera is here when you have lots of red blood cells. In hematology, we have two types of proliferative disorders, myeloproliferative or lymphoproliferative. Myeloproliferatives are lots of them, including polycythemia vera. In the last video, I've told you that myeloproliferative neoplasm are a disease of the elderly. There is hypercellular bone marrow because all cell lines are increased, but one of these cell lines is dominant, is super increased. In case of polycythemia vera, the red blood cells are super high in number. Rapid cell turnover will lead to hyperuricemia and they can transform into acute leukemia. By the way, these types, these three types of neoplasm can convert into each other. So polycythemia can be converted into ET etc 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 and it can be um, converted into myelofibrosis as well this is called malignant transformation polycythemia vera primary myelofibrosis as well as essential thrombocytosis are due to a problem with activation with jak2 of jak2 kinase this is a mutation jak2 kinase is very manipulative activation of this jak2 kinase will lead to Simulation of the erythropoietin and thrombopoietin receptors, and I've discussed this in the previous video, it stimulates the receptor leading to increased production of red blood cells in case of polycythemia vera, increased production of platelets in case of essential thrombocytosis, but that doesn't mean that EPO level is high. In fact, EPO level is low because this is a negative feedback. That's why JAK2 kinase is a manipulative guy, and it deceives the receptor as if there is EPO when in fact there isn't. That's why it's a disease. So polycythemia, what does polycythemia mean? Lots of blood cells. We mean lots of red blood cells to be specific. So we have two types. We have relative polycythemia and absolute polycythemia. Relative polycythemia is not actually a polycythemia. What happened here is that plasma volume decreased. So it's as if the red blood cell volume has increased when in fact it didn't. So let's say that this is the test tube that has plasma. Okay, here, plasma. And here are the red blood cells. And we'll take the same test tube. But this time we have loss of plasma volume. So we have less plasma. And we have the same amount of red blood cell. Let's do it again. So here's the first scenario, and here's the second scenario. And let's get the same volume of red blood cell. But now we have less plasma due to plasma loss. Okay, now this looks like lots of red blood cells relative to the whole volume. So there is not actually true polycythemia, it's relative polycythemia. So the hematocrit here is going to be higher than here. But again, nothing really happened. The blood cells did not increase in number, just the plasma decreased. That's why it's relative. That's why we call polycythemia vera vera, which in Latin means true, because it's not relative. It's not this false manipulative pseudo polycythemia. It's a true primary polycythemia. That's why. And I told you about the hematocrit before. On the other hand, absolute polycythemia. We have two types, primary or secondary. Primary is, you guessed it, mutation, cancer, such as polycythemia vera. We have this JAK2 leading to stimulation of the EPO receptor, leading to increased number of red blood cells, or an erythrocyte receptor mutation. Okay, so it's not the JAK2, but it's a mutation in this receptor of the EPO. In both cases, 
EPO level in the plasma will be low, it's called negative feedback. If you have lots of red blood cells, why bother secrete EPO? We already have enough. Perfect. The second type is the secondary absolute polycythemia. Here we have an increased EPO. And this increase in EPO could be appropriate, also known as compensatory, or it could be abnormal, also known as inappropriate. What's the difference? In cases of inappropriate, there is a tumor secreting this EPO, such as renal cell carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, etc. This increase in EPO is going to increase the number of red blood cells in your blood. Fine, this is inappropriate because there is a tumor. On the other hand, look at the beautiful appropriate. Something happened that led to a hypoxia, which is decreased oxygen. When you have decreased oxygen, it means that less oxygen is going to be delivered to your nice tissue. What happens here is EPO is going to increase. Danger, danger, there's danger. Let's increase EPO in order to form more platelets in order to try to carry as much oxygen as possible because it's a state of danger, it's a state of hypoxia. Causes of hypoxia, we have COPD, obstructive sleep apnea, high altitude sickness, CO poisoning, right to left cardiac shunt such as cyanotic heart disease. Also androgens can lead to increased EPO. So in summary, polycythemia could be relative due to decreased plasma volume or absolute and it has two types, primary, which is the mutation, the cancer, and secondary, which is increased EPO. Two types of that, the inappropriate due to tumors and the appropriate as a response, a noble response to the danger of hypoxia. Polycythemia vera, one of the myeloproliferative disorder, which means white blood cells are going to be high. Thrombocytes are going to be high. Erythrocytes are going to be high in number. We have JAK2 kinase mutation, this ugly manipulative thing. It's a clonal malignancy leading to increase red blood cell mass. One of the three cell lines is dominant, and in this case, it's the red blood cell, which will lead to decreased EPO. It's called a negative feedback, and it will lead to increased hemoglobin and hematocrit and erythrocyte count, which is the RBC count, more than 5 million, for example. This is different from anemia. Anemia is the opposite. Anemia is decreased red cell mass. Polycythemia, increased red cell mass. Very fine. Leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, and erythrocytosis will lead to hyperviscosity syndrome, leading to visual disturbance, neurological problems, and bleeding, as I've told you before. Clinically speaking, you have thrombocytosis. Yep, it's a myeloproliferative disorder. All three cell lines are increased. Will lead to bruising. Why? Because I have lots of platelets. Lead to bleeding. Why? Because these platelets suck. It's a neoplasm. It's not like a beautiful functioning platelet. No, 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 no. And why bleeding? Because it's a part of the hyperviscosity syndrome. So don't forget that. Thrombocytosis can lead to a problem called erythromelalgia, and I'll talk about it in the next slide. Increased number of hemoglobin due to increased red blood cell mass. This high hemoglobin level also can lead to thrombosis. Something very specific to polycythemia vera is called aquatic pruritus or aquagenic pruritus. What's that? It's itching due to water. So the patient should be an elderly guy, so should be like a gray hair, so pardon me. This guy goes to take a hot shower or a hot bath, doesn't matter. And then after shower, there is histamine release. And after this histamine release, you get itching. So itching after hot shower equals polycythemia vera. Why is there a histamine release? It's controversial, nobody knows why, but don't forget, we have increase of white blood cells and platelets and red blood cells and one of the white blood cells are the basophils so the basophils could be responsible for histamine again nobody is sure why is that gout yep because a myeloproliferative disorder has rapid cell turnover leading to increased uric acid level hepatosplenomegaly indeed due to congestion and hypercellularity and extra medullary hematopoiesis because it's a myeloproliferative disorder and your, your bone marrow is working like crazy so it needs help from the extra middle area, which means spleen.
Erythromelalgia. I love terminology and etymology. What does this word mean? Erythro means red. Melalgia, pain in the extremities. So there is paroxysmal dilation of the small arteries in the feet. This artery is getting dilated. And in the hands, leading to swelling, erythema, and burning pain. Imagine if there is blood coming to the leg and now there is more blood coming to the leg. What's going to happen? Swelling, erythema, and burning pain. They thought that this was a neurological pain, but this is not true. Microvascular thrombosis. Why? Because there is increased number of platelets. These platelets are everywhere, but they suck. Management. Aspirin. Why is aspirin? Two reasons. Aspirin is an antiplatelet, as you know from pharmacology. Aspirin is a pain killer. Cooling can help because your legs are warm. Leg elevation can help to reduce blood flow to the leg. It's called gravity. How to diagnose this polycythemia vera? We need a complete blood count with erythrocyte indices, which will yield increased hemoglobin level, more than 16. Increased hematocrit, more than 48%. Increased red blood cell count. Total leukocytic count, which is white blood cell. Increased platelets. It's called a myeloproliferative baby. Radiological imaging, why? To rule out aposecreting neoplasms such as renal cell carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, hemangioblastoma, etc. Arterial blood gas, why is that? To rule out appropriate increase in apo secondary to hypoxia. Remember that? So, in polycythemia vera, there is no hypoxia. It's a primary cancer. So oxygen saturation is normal and it's more than 92%, proving that the erythrocytosis is not secondary to hypoxia. Polycythemia is a primary polycythemia. EPO level in the plasma is going to be below. It's called a negative feedback. If you have lots of red blood cells, why bother secrete EPO? Good question. The most sensitive test for polycythemia vera is JAK2 mutation, hands down. 98% of patients with PV have JAK2 mutation. If you do a bone marrow biopsy, you'll find generalized hypercellularity. It's a mitoproliferative disorder, baby. Your bone marrow is working like crazy. And you'll find absence of bone marrow iron. Why? Because it's a myeloproliferative disorder, baby. We have consumed all the iron to form all of these white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Especially white blo uh, red blood cells. Forgive me because we need iron to form hemoglobin. Criteria for diagnosis of polycythemia vera. We have major criteria and minor criteria. What's the major? Hemoglobin has to be high. JAK2 kinase mutation. Minor, bone marrow hypercellularity plus tri-lineage growth, which means increase in red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet synthesis. This is called panmyelosis. Remember the myeloid and lymphoid stem cells? Panmyelosis extended myelosis, all cell lines are included. Decreased serum APO as a negative feedback, endogenous erythro erythroid colony formation in vitro. So if you take this problem, like genetic problem, and try to do it in the lab, it's gonna yield increased red blood cell count in vitro. That's what, what's mean. So to diagnose polycythemia vera, you need either two major criteria plus one minor criterion, or one major plus two minor. Complications of polycythemia vera, pay close attention, you have myeloproliferative disorder, will lead to increased blood viscosity, because blood viscosity is either due to increased red blood cell, or like increasing cell count, or increased plasma. In polycythemia vera, it's due to increased blood cell count. Platelets will lead to increased coagulability, maybe. Okay, pay attention. So one of the complications of polycythemia vera is bud Chiari syndrome that I've talked about in a previous video. So there is a problem, thrombosis of the hepatic veins, not the portal, the hepatic veins. It will lead to liver congestion and then it will lead to splenomegaly and maybe portal hypertension, lots of that. The most common cause of bud Chiari syndrome is polycythemia vera, if you recall. So what's the big deal? Why is that? Remember, in physics, there was the something called viscosity. Viscosity is viscosity is your fluid being so thick. 
So this is the viscosity coefficient, this is the force, this is area, and this is velocity, and this is distance. If you understand math, you can have this viscosity called eta on one side, and then since it's multiplied by a, let's bring a to the other side, but it's going to be down, okay, in the denominator. And since v is up here, v is going to go down. d is down, d is going to go up, and f will remain here in the same place. So basically, we are putting the viscosity in one side of the equation and everything else on the other side. Why is that? To know the relation. What's the relation between the viscosity and the velocity? One is up, one is down, they are inversely related. So in polycythemia vera, when you have increased blood viscosity, you have decreased blood velocity. It's also known as blood stasis, baby. And if you recall your Virchow's triad, we had three things that will lead to thrombosis. Endothelial damage, blood stasis, baby, and hypercoagulability. That's why in polycythemia vera, you get butt Chiari syndrome, which is nothing but a thrombus in the hepatic vein. Do this thrombus in a coronary artery, and you'll end up with a myocardial infarction. This thrombus, if it occurs in the brain, will lead to a stroke. Is it an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke? The answer is ischemic stroke. Stroke. It's a thrombus baby. Another complication of polycythemia vera is malignant transformation. I've told you they can convert to each other. So polycythemia vera can convert into acute myeloid leukemia, and it can convert into myelofibrosis. So complications, but Chiari, myocardial infarction, stroke, malignant transformation. So I've told you before that there is something called the inappropriate or the abnormal increase in EPO, also known as secondary absolute polycythemia. What are the causes? Renal cell carcinoma, remember the kidney secretes the EPO, okay? Hepatocellular carcinoma, hemangioblastoma, leumyoma, and pheochromocytoma. So how to treat polycythemia vera? Let's draw this. So let's have a nice bone marrow here. And this bone marrow is having a myeloproliferative disorder, which means it's secreting lots of blood cells, such as red blood cells, such as white blood cells, and platelets. Very cool. So let's treat it. If you have lots of red blood cells, let's do a phlebotomy. Let's remove some blood from you to decrease the cell count. Let's use a myelosuppressant. Let's, let's suppress this crazy bone marrow by using something called hydroxyurea. Let's treat the symptoms of thrombocytosis and erythromyalgia by using aspirin. It's a famous antiplatelet. Antihistamines to treat the aquagenic pruritus, the itching after hot showers. We can use allopurinol or resburicase to decrease the uric acid and prevent your gouty arthritis. What caused you to die in case of polycythemia vera thrombosis? Most common cause malignancies, because this is malignant transformation, they can transform into acute myeloid leukemia and into myelofibrosis. Hemorrhage, yep, post-PV myelofibrosis. And here is a case for you. You have a 67-year-old male coming to your clinic because he had severe pain in his left big toe yesterday night. He said, Doc, it was so bad, and I don't even drink alcohol. And by the way, whenever I take a hot shower, I feel so itchy afterwards. On physical exam, there is hepatosplenomegaly. His hemoglobin is 18. His hematocrit is 55. What do you expect to see on bone marrow biopsy? Is it A, normal, or B, clonal plasma cells representing more than 10% of the bone marrow, hypercellular marrow with panmyelosis, or D, hypocellular marrow, or A, myeloblast greater than 20%? Now, let me know the answer down below in the comments, and I'll let you know the answer to this case on my Facebook page and in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. So please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and there is a Dropbox link there for all of my notes that I'm drawing right now. And consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Like to see on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, and Instagram. 
Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.